I am Alex Radical from Board Game Co. And if you just watched me pick up some white little fuzzies, it's because I made the mistake, the horrible mistake, of opening this box of, well, Zombicide with its styrofoam stuff on top of a wool black, blackish fabric. Don't do that again. Fun tip. So, this is going to be your Zombicide second edition unboxing along with rambling, because that's part of the show, free of charge. And, 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 let's just, let's just jump into it. Again, perfectly centered cup of coffee right up there. Hello up there. And that's just because I, I have an unhealthy obsession with, well, with many things, really. I have an unhealthy obsession with board games, an unhealthy obsession with coffee, although I have one of those things under control. Your guess which one. But, 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 let's go into it. So, I don't know where I'm going to go with this one. Let's find out today, because I, I, let's start with the core box. Core box seems like a good place to start. Let's take these boxes, shove them off to the side. We got a whole bunch of boxes. We got some more out of sight. We have this, this sheet over here that, you know, I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be, but it looks like it's supposed to be tempting me into the role-playing game. I mean, it looks cool. I just don't do role-playing, so let's just toss this... Oh, it hit something over there. Oh, well. So, don't let my dismissiveness about role-playing get to you. I just don't particularly care for role-playing. Let's keep this coffee. I like the coffee in the shot. It makes me feel good about myself. So, I finally got my knife, in case you watched my unboxing with uh, Merchant's Cove, I believe. I talked about the fact that I was buying some knives on Amazon so that I can actually use decent knives as opposed to the stuff I had before. And I like this one. It's just, you know, this is a $11 knife on Amazon. You know, it looks pretty cool for what you get out of it. It's literally 11 bucks. Closes nicely, flicks open, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, basically, nice. I don't know why I'm pitching knives on camera now. It's got coffee, knives, and board games. That's a good title for the unboxing. And it's going to throw people off because it's Zombicide. There's going to be knives anyway. So, we're going to call this Zombicide Unboxing Coffee, Knives, and Board Games. Or coffees, Coffee, Knives, and Zombies. That works better. I like that one. Let's go with a title along those lines. So, Zombicide Second Edition Unboxing. We have our free command tossing off to the side over there. This has been a busy week for unboxing. Sometimes we go like months with nothing in terms of new unboxing content, and then other times we get, let me bump my chair forward, other times we get a whole bunch all at once. This, as you can see already, is going to be Zombicide Second Edition. No major surprises there. Although, are they giving you 01, 02, from original to second? Great, good, okay. So I wonder if this fully comprehensives Fully comprehensive is not a word. I want this to fully encapsulates, you know, whatever you're supposed to get there. We have the setup. It's all written kind of like scenarios. The game overview, the basics. Now, Zombicide 1 to another is going to be pretty pretty much the same. I just like seeing a full guide of what has changed, what's different. The artwork in this was always amazing. Player phase, player phase, zombie phase. One of the things that I find fascinating with Zombicide in general is they managed to have a lot of rules for what is a fairly simple game to get up and running. Although... Maybe it's because line of sight, zombie activation. I don't know why they have that much stuff, but let's see where it actually ends. We get to missions. So, page 36 is where the missions begin, and page, let's see, page, I don't know, 8 is, looks to be where the game begins. We have set up, so we have roughly, what is it, you know, 30 pages, 26 pages of rules, somewhere in that range. That's going to be your rule book over there. Lots of stuff, nothing crazy, anything on the back worth noting. Typical stuff, player phase, zombie phase, end phase, very typical command fair, all things considered. Then we have, speaking of typical command fair, our typical command fair box. Let's put this off to the side. Let's cover some of these things first. Let's just go ahead and dump that out. This is all very standard. No real surprises here. Command likes to impress us with the miniatures, not with the tiles or anything like that. So, let's go ahead and open this. As far as rambling, I don't have that much to talk about today. I mean, it's been three days in a row. I'm running out of my, my topics now. I've done a week in review, which was, speaking of which, when is this video going up? Let's think about that, because I need I need to talk. This is one of those weird things about the timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly. I need to think about... Okay, take a step back. I like to do conversational content. I like to, to talk as if you've watched a few of my videos before, which, by the way, if you're new here, apologies for leaving it out of the loop. You can just keep watching. It'll make sense eventually, or it never will. One of those two things. But I like to do conversational content, which means... I'm not just covering a, a game and a review and an unboxing in the simple state of flux of today, or the simple state of staticness of today. Rather, I'm talking about it from the stance of, hey, how's it going? What happened last week? I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm having a conversation. These are going to be some tiles, obviously. I'll just talk while I show you the tiles up top. And so, if I'm talking to you and having a conversation, it's important for me to understand the, the timeline of the conversation, because otherwise, things start to rapidly not make sense. Like, so for instance, this past month, a good example was going to be 
I did my Games Leaving the Collection video, and I said, which you already know, I talked about getting rid of Rising Sun, and I said, getting rid of Rising Sun, which you already know if you watched yesterday's video. Turns out I changed my plans, so it didn't, this didn't end up being yesterday's video, it ended up being a video from like, you know, a week earlier. Which is not the worst, not the worst, but if I do it out of order, that very quickly gets confusing. These are some tiles, nothing really, I'm not so into modern edition by the way, I, I like the, uh, what's it called, Wild West, I like the Invader as a theme, I like Black Plague as a theme. Modern zombies just don't really do it for me, obviously anyone who watches The Walking Dead or likes that trope, I mean modern zombies will be the most interesting, but for me it's it's fine, I'm not complaining, I, I'm happy to get it, I did, I did back it after all, but that's going to be our boxes here. So timeline, let's figure out the timeline here. Today, I'm filming this on Friday, which means I already filmed my weekend review. You've already watched that, hopefully. If you haven't, I do a weekend review, but it's more specifically, it's news and weekend review, where every single week I basically cover stuff going on, some news, things like that, and whatnot. So Sunday, Sunday's going to be, and again, I don't know when you're seeing this, we'll find out. Sunday's going to be Monster Hunter World, the review. Monday's going to be To Back or Not To Back. And that brings us to Tuesday. Tuesday is going to be a busy day. If all things go as planned, which, again, I still don't know when this is going up, but if everything went as planned, then Tuesday is going to have the Reckoners gameplay, the Reckoners uh, Marvel United gameplay, and then a play this, not that, comparing the Reckoners and Marvel United. Ooh, fun, right? I mean, maybe. Maybe it's not fun. Who really knows? But three videos in one day, all around that. That's going to be in preparation because Marvel United is going to be dropping on the next day, on Wednesday. So just giving people all pretty... Pretty, pretty, pretty miniatures. I got distracted, I'm sorry. We got miniatures, miniatures and distractions. So let's start with the basic test over here. This is gonna be the slider test. Does this, ooh, that's that's tough ratchet. So the good news is this is not gonna ratchet more than you want. That's not true, I'm lying. It's gonna, you're gonna try to ratchet it one. You're gonna pry this and it's going to ratchet. Ah, oh, geez, that is, that is a hard ratchet. Now I imagine that it'll get better as you play this because these sliders usually do. But that is definitely a bit of a ratchet over there. We have our cards. I will not be going through the cards. You know what? Let's go through a little cards. Let's live a little. So, Tuesday, like I said already, is going to be a packed day already. So this is definitely not going up Tuesday. And now I'd almost rather use this video as a reminder or an, as an alert as to what's coming up. So you feel like this, like now I want you to tune in Tuesday as opposed to finding out after the fact. Which means now I'm going to try to do this Sunday or Monday. Monday's too back or not to back. That's usually a pretty packed day already because it's a longer video. Sunday, I might put this up Sunday. This may go up Sunday later in the day. We'll find out. Or Monday. I haven't decided yet because there's another thing I haven't told you yet. So, we have just some cards over here. We have our police car. We have some of these cards. A shotgun. Look at that shotgun over there. I mean, we got stuff. I like the shotgun. I probably should turn these cards over because it looks like I'm coming out from the other side. So, we have Abomina, Abomina, Cop. We have Patient Zero. We have Walkers, 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 Rush. Just, you know, cards. Runners. Walker Rush. These are just typical things. This is going to be like, you know, the newer Zombicide that we saw in Invader, where it's always going to be one type on a single card, as opposed to mixing up the types. That never really bothered me. I liked it fine the way it was in Black Plague, honestly, but it doesn't bother me. We have a crowbar. That's going to be helpful. A fire axe. A pistol. No knives. We have evil twins. The golden kukri. Kukri, is that pronounced? I don't know. We have the gun blade. That's going to be a knife over there, because, I mean, after all, the video title is going to be something about coffee, knives, and zombies. Bag of rice. Bag of rice. Chainsaw. Where's Machete when you need him? Where is Machete? Machete was in the uh, trailer for, you know, the Zombicide 2.0. So Machete, like the actor, not Machete, the, the Machete. So that's going to be that. So we got this, we got dice, we got all these things. And then, of course, we got zombies, which I, do I even want to take out the bottom row here? This base box, by the way, far less interesting the, than the expansions and whatnot. We have some basic runners, fatties, all that. Do I care enough to look through it? Let's go ahead and look through a drop of fatties. It's just becoming a mess over here very quickly. So, let's go ahead and take a look at some fatties who apparently have become very mismatched in this box as we went through them. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed to organize them before taking them out because that makes sense, right? Okay, we have this fatty. Look at this thing. Look at that. Oh, that's some pretty good detail over there. All things considered, that is some pretty solid level of detail. I say all things considered a lot. I say a lot of phrases a lot. We have this one over here. Let's see if we can focus. Ah, focus, focus. And I know the box in the back is probably making it harder. There we go. Look at that. Look at that guy. That's pretty cool. So, we have our fatties, which again are over there, mostly fitting in and whatnot. Let's go ahead and put this back, and then put this back. We'll go ahead and take a brief look at some of these, these abominations. Because one thing that's nice, one thing that's different compared to most uh, Zombicide games you've played in the past, 
This goes on top of that. Okay, perfect. It is going to be the fact that, unlike most zombie games, most zombicide games, you're going to come to the table with 12 different survivors. So we're coming to the table with 12 different survivors. I don't love the coloring. It makes it kind of hard to see the details. Let's go ahead and t see what we can see over here. The detail is okay. I kind of prefer a Black Plague. But the detail on these, they're a little thin, which makes it hard to get the level of detail you'd want. But again, it's actually, it's pretty nice, all things considered. Yeah. And then, all things considered. There we go again. I'm sorry for that. I gotta work on my repeated phrases. We have this guy, who's on the front of the box, I believe. Look at him. Uh, forward a bit. There we go. Yep. Come on, just focus a drop more. I think it's focused. Focused enough. And then we have four different... Let's give you Chainsaw Girl. Chainsaw Girl is her name officially, I believe. And let's go ahead and... There we go. And Chainsaw Girl lives again. Yeah, it's pretty good detail, all things. I, I can't say that. I can't say it. I'm not going to say it this time. I caught myself. I'm learning. Okay, we got that. And then we got four different abominations. And I don't know if they're different abominations or just different abomination sculpts in terms of what we have in this box over here. So you can see over here, let's do one at a time. I can't focus when I do more than one. There we go. And then we got this one over here. Again, the detail on these is much better. Just the nature of, you know, being, you know, bigger. Okay, and we got two more as well, but I'm not going to overly go into those either. And we'll go ahead and we'll pack this box up before we go to the stretch goals and things that are more interesting. Going back to my conversation, the other thing I need to take into account is that I have a set of... Uh, not a set. I have a calyx shelf coming. Uh, more specifically, it's going to be a 5x5 five five calyx shelf. It's Technically speaking, it's better homes and gardens. For anyone who's ever asked me what my brand of shelving is behind me, that's going to be better homes and gardens. I forgot the plastic tray. Uh, better homes and gardens from Walmart, specifically, that is basically an equivalent to calyx if you don't live near Ikea and you want free shipping and slightly cheaper pricing. And they're basically almost exactly the same. I think dimensionally they're identical. I've had no issues with them. I've had them now for three, four years. No issues whatsoever in those three, four years. I like them, like them a lot. And we are going to be, I'm going to get another one now because I, I need the space because effectively, now that I'm doing content creation, one of the things that's happened is in addition to, uh, in addition to the regular game collection I have, which isn't, it doesn't generally grow. The amount of new things I get versus the amount of things I get rid of, I cycle it a lot. It, the box sizes get bigger. That does happen. But the actual growth in the number of games in my collection not a huge thing. But what does happen now is now I get a lot of games coming in and going out from content creation. I have games that I have, I'm doing, you know, a review for an upcoming Kickstarter. I have a bunch of games that publishers send me that I need to cover. So I have a lot more games going in and out and rotating effectively than I usually did. Prototypes, non-prototypes, it's just more cycling of, of stuff. And the problem is this basement was already pretty full. I was already at max. And so what ends up happening is I, I mean, you can't see it, but off camera there, this is the floor, just the stacks of games on the floor because I, there's nowhere else to put them. So I'm getting another calyx, which is going to my left over here. You won't be able to see it from this view, but when I'm over here by my computer doing, you know, should you back it or whatnot, you'll see behind where there's usually folding chairs, there's going to be a full larger calyx behind. So we're going to mix that up. Now, what does that have to do with my schedule for the week? Well, I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but I do have thoughts. Those thoughts are basically the idea. Let's get that coffee back on screen. See, now that I do top cams, you can actually see this coffee. Until now, who knows? Maybe I was faking it the whole time. Ooh, look at that. We got Cthulhu in a game. I love it when games mix Cthulhu into their games. I love just having Cthulhu shoved into all of my games. And in case you uh, know some of my content, I made a big stink about Kemet when they shoved Cthulhu into Kemet, the, re the reprint of Kemet. Because I don't mind Cthulhu in a game like this. I don't. I don't mind Cthulhu in a lot of games. But when you shove Cthulhu into Kemet, it felt off to me. It felt really off. Now, everyone can say, well, just ignore it. Ignore it. Just by all means. What do you have to do? Don't get it. And I say that to other people. And that's true. But the problem with that wasn't the ignoring of it or not. I can just get Cthulhu and get rid of it. Who really cares? The specific problem I had was that once Cthulhu was introduced, I had genuine questions. I'm not saying this to be dramatic. I had genuine questions, and I still do to whether the designer's vision of Kemet, do I have tape? I have tape. Whether the designer's vision of Kemet, meaning they made the game after all, they are the designers, developers, whatever, their vision of Kemet no longer matched my vision of Kemet. Now, it's their game. They can do what they want. But it led to me to generally question their what they were doing with any of the changes they were making. And it still does, by the way. To this day, I don't have the new Kemet, but I genuinely do have those those questions, speaking of Cthulhu over here. So when Kaman does it, and I'm like, ooh, who cares? Tentacles, abomination tentacles, and zombicide. I love it. Well, I can sound like a hypocrite. 
but it comes down to the type of game it goes in. Different games can accommodate it in different ways. Then we have Man Wolf Boar or something like that. Beer Man Pig. I don't remember the name of this character. Uh, this is from a South Park skit, if I'm not mistaken. I don't watch South Park avidly, not in the slightest, but I do see clips of popular things. And that's basically going to be the main. We have Slender Man, we have a wolf. More abomination stuff over there. Again, this is a loosely, you know, detailed unboxing. So, going back to my conversation, where's the box of stuff? There's the box of stuff. So what does my Calyx shelves coming have to do with anything? Well, I thought it would be a fun idea, and, and I don't know if I'm going to do it. It really depends on the practicality and all that, timing, lots of things depends on. But my Calyx is arriving tomorrow. And there's a possibility that on Sunday, there's a possibility that Sunday will also be a daily double video. Effectively, a day where I get two videos up. And that might be because I may choose to do a live stream of me building my Calyx shelf while talking to all of you and then just go from there directly into our Monster Hunter review or whatnot. So we'll see. And if that happens Sunday, because instinctively I'd rather do this unboxing on Sunday compared to putting it on Monday with the should you back it or not. But the problem is, now, see, the problem is that, hmm, timing stuff. See, the problem is then this video isn't being used as advertisement for the fact that that will happen, because now this video is going up after, if that happens. We don't know. I have no clue what happens Sunday, or not, or when this video goes up. I'm just trying to figure out the, t the timeline here. Trying to figure out. Okay, I'm not going to pull all these out because there's a lot here. These are going to be most of the daily unlocks where they just gave you a ton of different miniatures in terms of, I don't even know how well you can see over there. Let's just put it up a little bit. Just tons of miniatures. This is the Lazy Man's unboxing. Just showing you all the stuff up there. I do remember this one because my kids love anything to do with Asian themes. And this was, you know, a zombie, a few zombies trapped in a little like, you know, I don't know, Chinese dragon situation over there. That's kind of morbid. Look at that guy being kind of pulled along. I like it. I like it. Then we have, of course, the various abominations. We have various sets. Anything particularly interesting? We have this guy in a casket. Now, these all come with rules. I don't know... If the rules are, like, printed anywhere, we'll find out, I guess, soon enough. But hopefully they printed them there. That would be nice. They may, they may well be. So this is part of my, my unboxing stuff is, as a regular trend for the unboxings, I will usually get people who comment, oh, Alex asked where the rules are. I mean, all the rules are, like, right over here or right over here. They're, like, in plain sight. I just have no idea where they are. And that's because I'm focused on, on what I'm doing over here. And we got a lot of survivors here. And they're all in orange. I really don't love the orange color. I'm okay with it. I don't love it, though. So we have over here, this is probably Beyonce, I assume. I mean, they have all the usual fan service of different types of, of characters. I don't know if there were as many fan service in Zombicide 2.0, so much as just having characters. Is this Machete? This looks like it could be Machete, but I don't think it is. Do we have anything particularly interesting? Oh, oh, we do have. We have the Queen of England. That's definitely going to be there. This is the Stretch Goal box, which also means if it's the Stretch Goal box, it should probably have Donald Trump and, and Barack Obama. Do I see them here? Do I see any presidents? That was a big stir because people do not like, obviously one side was like, oh no, how can you put Barack Obama in our game? And the other side is like, well, how can you put Donald Trump in our game? And then there's people like me who are like, it's a board game, throw it out. And then people like me who are like, don't put Cthulhu in a board game, how dare you? So really it takes all kinds of special folks for us to run our world. I don't see either of the presidents, 44 or 45, in this box. I'm certain they were in this box, but I don't see them at all. That's very disconcerting. I'm pretty sure they were here, but nothing. Okay, well, I guess we're going to move on from trying to find the uh, various presidents because I just don't see them. Cool. Moving on. Moving on. So, the live stream situation. So, I may try to do a live stream on Sunday, in which case this video will go up Monday, which means it's too late. You know or don't know what happened. And, and we'll see, because I can't do the live stream Monday, because Monday I won't be able to do the, build a Calyx while doing this, because I do have a day job, and that, oh, these are in the wrong place over here. I do have a day job, which means I do have to make decisions about what gets filmed and when, and building a Calyx as a live stream has to be a Sunday activity, versus scheduled videos like this, where I'm filming it Friday, it can go up whenever, because of the magic of the internet and scheduling. One of my favorite comments, I got a comment once from somebody who was, I'm pretty sure they were Jewish, but they, if I don't know for certain, but they said, oh, and here I thought you were Orthodox, because I put up a video on Saturday. And I was like, I am Orthodox, we can time our videos. I am never online Saturday. Okay, the reboot box, rules. Oh, so this is going to be the part, you see, you see, this is what I said. This is going to be the part where it was already listed here. Yep, here we go. So, I mentioned people will be like, oh, come on, it's already had rules, whatever. I've literally flipped through the book with the rules after I talked about the rules. Fortunately, I found them after. So, for instance, we have the the quarterback. This runner will stop at nothing until he reaches the goal. When entering a zone, he immediately tackles every survivor with such a powerful impact that it'll cost them one additional action to get up. Wise players would think of shooting him before that even happens, but keep this in mind. 
due to the heavy protective gear, it takes two damage. It takes a two damage hit to kill him. So he's a kind of runner with two damage hits and extra activations, which is fun. I don't love the idea. I'm curious how it plays out. This whole idea and this and they did this in Wild West as well, in Undead or Alive. I am very curious how it plays out the practicality of, well, all these extra rules, whether you'll remember them or not. Let's go ahead and let's do Fort Hendrix first before we do Washington ZC. This box is heavy, by the way. I don't know what's in it, but I mean, plastic, plastic miniature zombies, but it's heavy. So yeah, that's going to be the schedule for the week so far. So schedule for the week, which you may or may not know, but depending on when this video goes up, is tentatively a live stream on Sunday. Tentatively this video on Monday, after the two back or not to back. And then the live stream would be before the monster review, monster hunter. Or we'll see. We'll figure it all out. You'll, you'll, it'll all make sense eventually. And then when Tuesday is going to be, hopefully, Reckoner's gameplay, Marvel United gameplay, and Marvel United play this, not that. All with Mina. Just me and Mina playing both. So, here we go. Fort Hendrix. Fort Hendrix, a campaign expansion. Oh, it's another campaign expansion. Oh, two expanded campaign expansions. Cool. The Fort Hendrix campaign is going to have rules and stuff and more stuff. And they, I mean, we have these these walkers over here. They only gave you six of them. Now, they did give you the option to buy more, which I did because I don't want you to give me only six shooters. My biggest thing with Zombicide, I love how much variability uh, the Black Plague gave you in terms of different types of zombies and then the expansions and Green Horde. It gave you a ton of variability. Versus in, in, uh, in Zombicide 2.0 and in Zombicide Undead or Alive, they give you a lot of variability in Abominations and in Walkers and in uh, Heroes or Survivors, but not nearly as much in terms of the types of zombies. I want my types of zombies to be different. And so when Fort Hendrix gave us six shooter zombies and then said, now there's only six of them, I was disappointed, frankly. I was very disappointed. We have our campaign sheet. We have our notes too. I'm not going to be opening these. These look like things that I'm not supposed to open yet, so I'm not going to open those at all. No spoilers there at all. What do we have under here? We have our spinner will go under here. We have our dice. We have our abominations, our zombies. Let's see. Let's go through a few of these things. It's going to be taped on. I hate when they tape on. When they, when they tape these things on, it just makes the unboxing so difficult. We got over here. Is that tape? Oh yeah, there it is. There we go. I found you. Okay. That's going to be this side going up. And then we'll have to turn and pivot, pivot, pivot. See, those of you who watched my interview with my wife know that she does not like friends, but we still screen pivot and I still like friends. Okay, that should be enough to get this off, I think, maybe. Watch me struggle on camera to pull this off. Okay, there we go. So, now that we did that, putting this back over here, we have some of our shooter zombies, which we'll show you. There we go. I mean, honestly, yeah, I'm okay with it. It's not it's not particularly mind-blowing. The sculpts over here, I think the the abominations are some of my favorite. But past that, we have this military unit over here. I mean, that's, that'd be fun hero to play. I don't mind being a military unit hero. Survivor. Survivor. Different games. What game did I unbox that had heroes? What game did I play that had heroes? There was a game recently that had heroes. Oh, uh, Monster Hunter, I guess. Probably. Maybe. That was that one thinking of? Oh, come on. Look at this. Oh, come on. Ha, <laughs> ha. Okay. See, I managed to knock that out of place while putting this back in. This is going to be so annoying. Irritating is what it is. Okay, cool. That covers that. That covers that. We'll put this back in. We'll dump this back in as well. Let's put that over there. And that's going to be our Fort Hendrix expansion. No, I'm not going to go through the tiles because this video is running long. These are meant to be casual unboxings where I just go through whatever I can, talk about random stuff, and continue. Zombie Apocalypses. I love the artwork. The artwork in this game is tremendous. Miniatures I'm okay with, but the artwork is tremendous. And keep in mind, when I say I'm okay with, I just hold Command to their own standard. They they have better and worse miniatures in games, and even in this game, they have better and worse miniatures. So I'm just holding them to the standard that they have for themselves. I, I like their games. I'm just going to I'm gonna comment on what the better or worse games are. That's the nature of what we're doing. And this is not done, by the way. Even when we're done with Washington, D.C., we have a bunch of boxes off camera. I'll probably open most of them. This is going to be another campaign. So if you have two campaigns over here that you can go through, I may actually go through this. with I mean, Zombies has a kind of campaign game that, you know, going through like six, ten missions, whatever it is, doesn't actually bother me. It's the kind of thing I can actually manage because, well, I have a bunch of people in my, my game group who do like Zombicide. Uh, you know, people, some people you haven't seen on camera, some people you have. Uh, Shira likes Zombicide. Reena, I'm still trying to get it to like Zombicide. I'm not going to open these tiles because I'm running behind. And let's go through there. And that's basically it. That's what we got over here. Nothing particularly amazing. More runners or survivors and stuff in there. A campaign sheet to keep you going. Hopefully it's a good campaign and not a Massive Darkness 1 campaign. See, Kaman hasn't actually proven. I don't think so. I have to go through their games. I don't think Kaman has a track record for doing campaigns well. At least not yet. Okay. That's that. 
Now, this is something that I bought because I'm silly and I make impulse to buys, and this is going to be a second copy of the Daily Double Spawn set. So where am I putting these? Well, I'm going to be tossing all these into plastic bags as soon as I decide I want everything, possibly earlier, so we'll see. But this is going to be just more of the Daily Doubles, I believe. So it's giving you all those, those basic things along with another set of the rules and just more of the Daily Doubles in case you wanted more of, well, a second copy, which is, I did want a second copy, clearly, because I bought this. I can't say I regret it, but I'm also not certain about those Daily Doubles, as I talked about already. Like, am I going to look up the rules for each one each time? Will I do that? I don't know. You tell me. We'll find out. And then we have all of these. So, these are going to be all the various extras. Danny Trejo, Gabriel, uh, Zombie Soldiers. We'll go through all this stuff a little bit at a time. So, we have... This is going to be Nico. Nico. I don't remember what he's an expansion for, but they have all these optional stretch goals that they throw in as an extra if you bought different options. So, some of these are probably for if you got, you know, the Fort Hendricks or if you got the Washington ZC, all the optional buys. These are probably the two for off for Fort Hendricks and Washington ZC. So we have Nico, who's now going to get special attention on camera because he's in his own little box. He comes with his own little survivor card, which is great because you know you need those. And then we have this own little, oh my gosh, I am not, I, I do not have the patience for this. This is gonna be like cutting every single piece of tape open. That knife is gonna be so sticky so fast. Okay, let's go over here. And we got him up here. There we go. There's Nico. See, zombie apocalypse. If, you, if there's an actual zombie apocalypse, I don't know about you guys, but all I need is a gun with, like, six bullets. Why six bullets, you ask, Alex? This is the morbid part of the conversation. Because it's not the zombies I'm trying to shoot. I've watched zombie TV shows. I've watched zombie apocalypse movies. Most people die horrific, gruesome deaths. Those that survive, there's no happily ever after. They are temporarily surviving in a wasteland of of, mo of bear or whatever. It's not a happy ever after situation. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. And, and I will take care of things in a cleaner, faster way. Because I don't want to live in that world. And you're like, but Alex, you always have to... You've watched the movies. Like, think it through. Think it through. Like, give yourself a few minutes to actually think. Not just the reactionary will to live. The reactionary will to live is great. We should all have the reactionary will to live. But that aspect of, of do you actually want to be the spawn focus? There we go. Do you actually want to be the person in a zombie movie? Think through the zombie movies you've seen. Think through how it goes. Think through how many make it. And genuinely ask yourself, what do you want there? I will fight through a lot of things in life. I believe in, in perseverance. But there's perseverance, and there's watching all the zombie movies where everyone dies, and just knowing a little bit ahead of time how things are going to play out. So let's see what we're going to go through over here. We have our zombie soldiers. I'm not going to bother going through this. This is basically more soldiers, six more soldiers from the, you know, Fort Hendricks, in case you wanted that over there. We have the presidential box. Oh. Oh, this is the presidential box. Well, now I know where the presidents are. Well, well let's, let's go through this now so we don't end on a tough note. And that's because, again... For me, I'm going to play with both of them. I will have them both in my game. I don't care. They're semi-amusing. But I also understand, ignore the crying child, not crying, ignore the noisy child in the background. I also understand and recognize that politics has gotten so divisive that it is genuinely, it can genuinely be hurtful or frustrating to have to deal with that in a game. Meaning you don't want your game to have that. So, and the more negatively affected you, you have been by any particular party, president, anything else, the more you're going to feel, well, I don't want that in my game. And I, by the way, I would never play with this to anyone who didn't want to. Anyone who said, I don't really want to. In fact, I don't even want to. I don't really want to go through it. We'll just show you them quickly. Because, I mean, genuinely, this might be frustrating for some people to see. We have a bunch of presidents that we are okay with. A bunch of presidents people feel more strongly about. And it's just, it's, it's not, yeah. It's distasteful. I get it. You know what? I get it. And not distasteful. This is a strong word. I understand why for people, right, I think individuals can make their own decision as to what bothers them or not. But like the idea of me even talking about it or sharing it on camera when some people will be bothered by it, it's like, I just, I'm not interested in trying to cause anyone pain, frustration or anything. So let's just move on from it. To Danny Trejo. And if you don't like Danny Trejo, well, you can go ahead and just hit that dislike button because Danny Trejo is awesome. Machete! Danny Trejo. The bad survivor. Okay. Yeah, I try not to swear. I generally try not to swear. 
It's just a thing, and it's actually f funny. Uh, I like watching five games for five games for Doomsday. Great channel. I'll throw a link down below. Everybody uh, shouted out to him before. I like his stuff. He's beyond, amazingly well well spoken, well written, well whatever. He also likes to swear. That the, the detail here is decent, not amazing, but decent. He also loves to swear. So he swears a lot in his content. He doesn't really hold back. He doesn't really believe in family friendly, so to speak. Not to say he's against family friendly. He he is not family friendly. We have Machete as a hero. See, there's always different machete rules in the game. Machete as a hero seems fun. But he put out a video recently called In Defense of Swearing, or something like that. And I watched it because I like his content. I'm going to watch it. I want to hear the other side. Now, I don't agree with him. It's a long conversation about, you know, basically defending swearing and why swearing has a place and impact. And it's not purely, uh, you know, the resort of the crude and all that. And I, I will agree with that. I think there are people who are enormously well-spoken who will swear. He is inherently evidence of that. But at the same time, while I think that there are going to be exceptions, I disagree that I think swearing often is a resort of, you know, it's a, you stub your toe and you, you lash out with some expletive or whatever. And I think replacement swear words are the same problem. They both come down to, most of the time, not always, most of the time, to me, they both come down to a, a lack of control and precision over our language. Are we reactionary in our language or are we well thought out? So if you, like he did, if you draft a, you know, an expose that has swear words for a specific intent, I don't like them myself, but because of the association that I have with them, but I, I don't think it's the same problem I have. My problem is specifically one of people not being in control of their speech, people resorting, and by the way, I'm realizing now I'm going to get any number of people who are happy swearing with disagree with this, which is all good, it's all good, this is my viewpoint, but... I, I just don't love swearing. I find it to be reactionary in nature and something that, you know, something goes wrong and you swear. Now, people who have incorporated into the language to the extent that they just swear all the time, then my issue with it is more just that the previous association. That doesn't mean you can't swear. It doesn't mean you can't swear around me. You can do what you want. It means I choose not to swear because I have chosen to set for myself standards, as you will, my own standards, that I'm choosing to impose myself about how I use language. And that language goes to any degree. It goes to saying absolutely anything that I'm not okay with, whether it's hurtful words to other people, whether it's resorting to stubbing my toe and going, oh, bleeping, 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 bleeping. Even if the word I use is bleeping, even if I find a replacement word, then I, th I still personally have the problem of the replacement word is doing the same thing. It's still a reactionary approach to something. Just now you found a replacement word, so it's not even like as entertaining or whatnot. So it's kind of halfway. You know what, let's go through the cars last. Okay, this is the spot over here. So yeah, that's my own personal view on swearing. I don't like it. I try to avoid it. But you do what you want to do. This, this all, that's nice thing. So everything, so fascinating being on YouTube. It's, you know, I say things and they're my opinions and they're how I live my life or the, the way I feel about board games. And then you have people who get that and that's cool. And that's awesome. And then you have people who are like, no, how dare you not like Rising Sun? Alex, what's wrong with you? I can't even watch your content anymore. Like you'll have people of all kinds of, and by the way, for what it's worth, if you watched my content because you agree with my taste in games, and then over time you find out that you do not agree with my taste in games, then that then that's reasonable, because that's no, I'm no longer a value add. Shut up and sit down is going to be my constant comparison here. I find shut up and sit down to be amazing. They're, I think their content's incredible. I subscribe and I watch most of their videos. I do not watch them for game recommendations because I have found over time that my tastes do not align with them. And if the only reason I watched them was for game recommendations, I would have stopped watching them. But that's not why I watch them, so it's okay. But yeah, if you watch my content for game recommendations and you find that I don't like games you like and I like games you don't like, well, you probably should watch someone else for game recommendations. But if you watch my content because you like hearing me talk about things like swearing on videos and, you know, presidents and, and guns and zombies and knives and coffee and who knows what, well, if you like watching my content for that, then my taste in Rising Sun should have no impact on that, nor should it matter whether I prefer swearing or not swearing, and you have a different opinion of that. It's all good. We can all live, coexist, all that. Do you know those bumper stickers, coexist? I'm always intrigued by those bumper stickers. It's one of those fascinating things. I, I have a tendency, a personal opinion, that most people with the bumper sticker coexist, I don't think they actually want to coexist. I think they want you to be coexisting with them if it makes sense it's a it's a i should this is weird i have no data to back this up whatsoever i'm gonna walk away slowly from that tangent and and you know just go ahead and open the car set which is the last thing i have 
35 minute long unboxing, 40 minutes, something like that. I don't know exactly where I am because I, I always start these cameras before the actual video starts. So I think it's around 35 minutes where we are right now, but who knows? There's a time stamp on the camera. It's just, again, I start, I hit go, and then I continue setting up and grab some stuff, do some things, or in the case of this, oh, I probably should have kept some, I probably should have kept some zombies out. That would have been helpful, right? So we have the cars. Do these wheels spin? These wheels move. They don't spin. These don't spin. They, they move. I don't know if I care about that. Okay, so we have cars over here with their abominations. Let's go ahead and let's just put some, let's grab some of these over here. Let's put these up here so you can nicely see over there. And let's grab those, those heroes out, again, those survivors, so you can go ahead and see how they look in the car. Which, by the way, just because I think it's amusing, I'm going to do two cars over here. I'm going to do one car with this guy and this guy which can go over here and here. So you have the bicycle and the wheelchair in the car. That seems like a bit of a mess. And then we're gonna put these four people standing up in this car. Now, this is not amazingly well done. I much prefer the way they handled the riders in Wild West, in Undead or Alive. But you see, you can have these cars over here full of survivors just moving around the board, which functionally kind of works, right? Put them over there in front of you. <laughs> Robert, Robert, head down to the corner. We got a zombie around the corner. How do you write there, Michael? Someone's going to clip that and put it on a YouTube video, aren't they? Whatever. So, anyways, that's going to be, I don't understand what just happened there. My kids, you know, I debated, and I will do this in the future. Some of my kids particularly love playing with minis, and I debated having one of them join me for this unboxing because they love come on games. Like, they call them like, oh, yeah, come on game, come on game. Abba, I want the come on game. So they'll join me for a future unboxing at some time. But he absolutely would have understood that little car scene I just did. Because he'd be doing it. Anyways. So. I think that is going to be mostly a wrap on our crazy unboxing. Got to put these cars back in their situation over here. I want to get this unboxing done nicely. Well, I mean, this box literally showed up half an hour ago. I want to get the unboxing done quickly because we're heading into Saturday, my offline day. And that means my, my kids, who like playing with my miniatures, now that I've done the unboxing, they can actually play with the miniatures. As opposed to if I didn't do the unboxing, they'd have to wait till next week. Poor kids. I can't imagine where they'd find other miniatures and board games to play with if that happened. That's going to be our... Come on, unboxing schedule for the week. I have no idea. It depends when this video goes up, but whenever it does go up, it probably is going up Sunday or Monday, which means either way, make sure to pay attention to the three videos dropping on Tuesday for probably, probably three videos dropping on Tuesday for the Reckoners gameplay, for Marvel United gameplay, and then a play this, not that, comparing the two, just myself and my wife covering that. And then past that, we'll figure out the rest. It all depends. You've, you've heard me go on for long enough. As always, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And... Well, again, I messed up the order. It's the, sometimes I'm, when, I'm, when I'm doing a, a script, a video, a review, I'm, I know more exactly. Not a script, but I have more of a sequence. When I'm just rambling, I don't know where to drop it. So, as always, I'm Alex Radcliffe, and have a good weekend. Or it's not weekend. There we go again. I'm, I'm, I give up. Bye.